ESPN has recently released their predictions ahead of the 2024-25 NBA season, and they've got a prediction on the Boston Celtics' final record in the Eastern Conference. So before I show you guys that and everything else that they want to snub the Boston Celtics for, I have one quick question. If you guys think the Celtics are going to win over 60 games yet again, go on ahead and let me know in the comment section. Type O for over or type U for under. Happy Baby Friday, Boston Celtics fans. On today's show, ESPN's got a lot of things to say about our Boston Celtics players and the team as a whole. Surprise, surprise, nobody wants to see us win. A shocker. So I'm going to break down who I thought got snubbed, who actually had a pretty good recognition, and then talk a little bit about where they see the Boston Celtics heading in to the Eastern Conference. Because remember, I know it was a long time ago because obviously we won the NBA Finals, but we were also 13 games ahead from number two in the Eastern Conference last year. So let's go ahead and jump in. The biggest snub that I saw, my mouth literally dropped. When I saw that Drew Holiday, six-time All-NBA defensive team member, was not in the top five to win Defensive Player of the Year, why? Please tell me why. All right, I will be honest. Wimby, that's a pretty fair assessment. That guy is crazy. That He almost won DPOY in his rookie year, which is unheard of. Rudy Gobert, I think he honestly hits the decline this season. Bam Adebayo, fair. Anthony Davis, sure. Mikel Bridges? Are you freaking kidding me? You put Bridges over Drew Holiday as a better defender? No, sir. Mm, no, sir. That's not going to fly with me, respectfully. So I did my own digging. The stats don't even show that he was a better defender. Did he play 11 more games? Yes. But in defended field goal percentage last year, they allowed their opponents to shoot this while they were guarding him. So, for example, Drew Holiday, when it comes to perimeter defense, he allowed his opponents to shoot 45% from a three-point line. He also allowed 36% to shoot from the twos. This is what he does when he defends players. He is white on rice. It does not matter if you're standing at six feet. It does not matter if you're seven foot tall. Drew Holiday will defend you like a big and has the quickness of a guard. The fact that they put bridges over Drew Holiday, not to mention last year in the NBA Players Anonymous poll, 96 people said that Drew Holiday was the toughest defender they'd ever played against. This is what the real NBA players are saying. And now even GMs know what's going on. I love this quote so much, I actually read it word for word to Knicks Now host Marshall Green, and he said, who gives a fuck? I care, Marshall Green. Why? Because they said one of the questions that was asked is, who's the best perimeter defender in the league? And 13% of GMs voted for Bridges. Wow. Beautiful. While 13% seems like a low number, it was the second highest percentage after 50% from the general managers voting for Boston Celtics guard Drew Holiday. Everybody knows Holiday's a better defender than Bridges except for the people at ESPN. Do we need any more motivation to go back-to-back -back this year? So, am I crazy? Let me know in the comment section down below. Pick one. Who is a better defender? Type JH for Drew Holiday. Type MB for Mikel Bridges. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Coming up, I've got two more snubs. And then we got the Eastern Conference Finals, excuse me, Eastern Conference records for the regular season coming up. But before I get into that, let me tell you about America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members, including myself. I quite frankly play the this probably more than I should, but it's just so aesthetically pleasing and so, so easy to play. So if you guys want to join with me, all you have to do is pick between two to six players and just pick more or less on their stat projections, and you get to watch the winnings roll on in. For my events later today, I do have Paul Skeens having more than seven pitcher strikeouts. Same with John Quell Jones have more than 10 rebounds. She's been dominating the entire season, so you might as well go on ahead Pick some more. I think life's a little bit too short. I always like to go the more, but I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. So if you guys want to, all you have to do is pick more or less, and you guys can win up to 100 times your money 
on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 So if you're wondering, Allie, how do I get started on this beautiful daily fantasy sports app? Here is the key. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks run your game. Let's talk about Tatum's game, shall we? Because Tatum has been kind of that floater in the MVP conversation the last couple of years. He kind of cracks the top three, then moves to the bottom three. It's a little bit iffy. But Jason Tatum is still in the top 10 when it comes to MVP conversations. But Jalen Brown has not entered that MVP conversation, I think, ever for the most recent Eastern Conference Finals MVP and NBA Finals. MVP. But here is ESPN's predictions. Obviously, Luka and Jokic, they're going to be number one and number two. I will never disagree with that. SGA, he needs to have a phenomenal year to keep that standing. And I like that. I really enjoy watching. And Giannis Tenacumpo, obviously coming back from an injury. We'll have to see how he does. Joel Embiid, meh. I'm just not on the Embiid train. And then there is our King. Jason Tatum, just two spots ahead of John Moran, who played less than 20 games last year. How is that possible? But I'm not going to call this a full-on snub. I do believe Jason Tatum sitting at about 7th in the top 10 is about where he should be, in my opinion, for MVP. Is he the best player in the Boston Celtics? Yes, in my opinion. Is he the best player in the league? Probably not. But I do believe he should be in the MVP conversation, and so does Jason Tatum. Here's what he had to say last year when he was kind of in the mix in the top 10, cracked the top five, ended up at number six. He said, I think individual awards are important. I'm just not going to say that they're not, but everybody just wants to win a championship. My king, that is why I love you, Jason Tatum. But I actually went to go see what the sports books had to say about where their MVP for 2025 standings currently sit at to see if ESPN was outlandish. Considering they have Jason Tatum at the exact same spot gives me a little bit of hope that, all right, Tatum may not win MVP this year, but I would like to see at least Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum in the MVP conversation. I think Jalen Brown's about to go nutty this year. And don't call me crazy to put him at least in the conversation that Jason Tatum has been a part of the last three year, th last three years. But if I am crazy, let me know in the comment section down below. But if you guys are actually on my side and you think Jalen Brown deserves to be in MVP discussions this season, type MVP in the comment section if you guys agree with me. Let's move on to not the players, but the head coach, Joe Mazzula. He was tagged as the third best coach ahead of the 2024-25 NBA season. Yeah, that sounds about right. For the player and the team that just won the NBA Finals? No, it doesn't. But here is the top five. I'm not going to get into the back half of that top ten. But Tom Thibodeau, 29 total points for first place. Then you got Mark for 24 points with the OKC Thunder. Absolutely, he had a really good offseason making a bunch of trades. And then 22 points is where Joe Mazzula sits, just four above Greg Popovich and then Kenny Atkinson with the Cleveland Cavaliers. You've got to look at how tight that race is, 29 to 24. Joe Mazzula is still in this running to possibly win Coach of the Year, and how can he not when he's got the genius brains of Brad Stevens, the former executive of the year, right by his side. I think Joe Mazzula, if he goes back-to-back, -back, and if he leads the Celtics to as dominant of a regular season as he did last year, he should be a shoe in for Coach of the the year. But let's get to the really big predictions. They have predicted the record for all of the Eastern Conference. And surprise, surprise, the Boston Celtics are number one yet again. I was scared, honestly. When I was scrolling down, I was taking my sweet time because I was like, I swear to God, if I see the New York Knicks at number one, I am going to lose it and then punch Marshall Green in the face. Just kidding, but that's how angry I would be. Nonetheless, the Boston Celtics, their record is 61-21. and 21. And it's not 13 games ahead of number two, but it's still a sizable lead having 61 wins for the Celtics and 53 wins for the New York Knicks between one and two. And it's a much tighter race than it was last year. That makes me 
actually very excited. But you also have to think, 61 wins is still a lot without Kristaps Porzingis within the first two months of the NBA season. That is how long he's projected to sit out, the latest recovery being about January. But without Kristaps, I'm going to be honest, I am a little bit worried that the New York Knicks might actually end up being closer than what ESPN had predicted. 61 wins to 53. The New York Knicks made a lot of changes in the offseason, changes that have actually elevated them that could compete with the Boston Celtics. But it'd be nice change because when you beat somebody four out of five times last season, this is not really much of a competition. So honestly, I'm concerned with the Knicks, but I'm also very hopeful that they're going to give us some good basketball this year, finally. I mean, winning that much, I mean, just gets quite frankly, exhausting. But looking like it's going to end with number one and number two again with the Knicks and the Celtics pending, you know, a, a blowout in game seven against the Indiana Pacers. Do you guys think the Knicks and the Boston Celtics will be in the Eastern Conference Finals this season? Type Y for yes, type N for no. And if the ESPN analysts or any other media outlet decides to disrespect the Boston Celtics again, I will talk about it right here on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. All you guys have to do is hit that sub button for me.